Hello there kitties, I'm Kari, the vacuum tube witch, and it's amp building time again. This time, I'm gonna wire the output tubes, the EL84 pentodes, and possibly do some experiments with the phase inverter. We'll see if I can get it to work right now. If not, then I'll do it uh, next time, because I want to have the power amplifier complete and running before before I uh, do the preamp. So, let's get to the bench. So here we've got the schematic for the amplifier. Let's get a better view on it. Come on. What's happening? Let's get a better view. It's uh, it's a uh, rough sketch, uh, <coughs> and uh, it probably won't be the final version. I'd rather do it. Uh, as it is now, and uh, correct any any bugs uh, that appear as I test it. The the input uh, of the amplifier feeds into the long pair pair phase inverter with uh, ECC eighty one. It's a uh, middle middle gain. Uh, tube uh, compared to ECC82 and uh, ECC83 it's somewhere in the middle and uh, it was originally meant for high frequency applications like um, like the VHF uh, heads uh, in, uh, in radio and television receivers or, or the heterodyne uh, oscillators it was then superseded uh, by ECC85, but it got a uh, hold uh, in um, the audio circuitry world. And I've got a few of them uh, kicking around in my lamp, so I will use one to spare the ECC83 for better applications. And I, uh, I did some uh, calculations um, that should get me there. Let's do the long term per resistor at uh, 13 kilos. I haven't calculated the coupled resistor. I'd like, uh, I, I'd like to have the something like uh, one or one and a half uh, volts uh, developing across it uh, for two tubes that would conduct uh, three milliamp each so uh, six milliamp uh, one uh, one volt uh, over uh, six milliamp um, that would be something like uh, like uh, 160, I guess, 160 ohms, if I'm correct on this one. We'll see. And then I'll feed the I'll feed the inverter output uh, using those capacitors into. And the power tubes the, with the common uh, cathode resistor of 130 ohms bypassed by a um, capacitor and uh, to 100 ohm resistors or, or something close uh, as the screen grid resistors. And on the output section I will use a uh, Eight, uh, eight ohm, uh, eight ohm to 
tam je Leont, Enkais, tá... tá... Speaker Cable gets accidentally disconnected and uh, there will be um, some protection against um, voltage spikes uh, in case uh, that is happening to save the output transformer. I always uh, add those diodes in my builds. So, let's go over to the practical part. Let's take out the rectifier tube. And uh, first, uh, I will need uh, some extra points for, for attaching the, the connections. And I decided to add a uh, terminal strip uh, right, uh, right here. I will have to drill one hole. I've got uh, a pair of uh, standoffs. Unfortunately, they are of slightly different length. One is uh, two millimeters uh, shorter than the other, but uh, I will uh, solve this problem by adding a nut or just by replacing the, the screw with... Uh, and no, this is not the... this is not the practical way to do it, but uh, I will add the nut on this side. So let's start by uh, attaching this terminal strip could use a, a chassis stand like uh, Uncle Doug has. He's a, he's a real dear professional in uh, amp service. He does a, a lot of work. So, uh, in his case, um, it's worth the investment. It, in my, <laughs> it's, uh, it's worth considering, but I won't build. Uh, I won't buy a uh, commercial one. I'd rather build one myself. So now I've got to mark uh, the the hole where I want that uh, terminal strip. Let's make it here. And of course the automatic center punch for the people. And the hand drill that I last used for making those uh, twisted pairs. And now I will use it for drilling. I wanted to be extra careful with with this hole, not to accidentally damage uh, the heater wires on the opposite side. And uh, let's take a look uh, if if I uh, managed to pull it off. No, they were something like one or two millimeters away, so no problem on that one.
Now debar this uh, this hole from both sides with a larger drill. Now the terminal strip. See? They will be of the same length now. It's almost as high as the chassis, but if uh, if no parts uh, protrude over it, then there's no problem. I will need another screw. And reuse the washer. This one is made of stainless steel, it's different than the others, and I'm a fucking perfectionist, so I will be bugged uh, if I let it uh, stay this way, so I will change the screw. have to take one from the stock. And now hopefully attach the terminal strip. Got the whole spacing good uh, from the get go, no problems with that. The terminal strip doesn't protrude uh, over, the, over the chassis. We're good to go. It's a few millimeters uh, from, uh, from the edge. Let me show you. There is gap. So now for the cathode wiring. Uh, 
Arios does black wire. I normally use uh, white for heating, black for ground and uh, red for anything that's on a high potential. And uh, the insulation uh, also tends to melt away, so I'd rather put a uh, piece of uh, heat shrink tube uh, on the end. And let's take a look at the pinout of the tube. We've got a cathode on pin number 3. And uh, we'll use the, the center stem uh, as the ground. Here on the other tube uh, I couldn't keep the center stem because it would uh, come in the way uh, after I put the effect loop uh, jacks in. So it had to go. And here is uh, pin number three. And I will have to do some uh, trick uh, in order to attach this um, large uh, resistor. I uh, might, I might do it in a slightly unorthodox way. Then the cathodes will have to be connected together. And I could lay the resistor between the chassis and the terminal strip. Going all the way to the main uh, filter cap. Or I could just uh, use the stem on the inverter tube going across clearing the effect loop socket and I think that this is the way And I will also have to add the capacitor. Building an amp, it's, it's a lot of figuring out. It's a... Uh, it's design and build uh, in uh, in one process. Unless you build a series, uh, a, a run of uh, a few amplifiers or more, and have the process uh, figured out in the first steps and then just recreate it.
I will bend the lead on uh, the resistor so that <coughs> it uh, hangs above all the all the rest. Bend it towards the middle. And put the lead through that hole. Come on. Oh, I can rotate the middle stem. That makes it even better. Like I said, it's a lot of figuring out things. The resistor is in place. Now I'll do the output jack wiring. I'll do it on the jack and chassis. This is the disconnected contact that will be grounded and this is the contact that goes to the winding. And I will connect the resistors uh, between those two. I also connect the output transformer secondary. Mm, maybe 
maybe use the white wire according to my convention for for the signal and uh, black wire for the ground make those wires just a teeny tiny bit longer than I need in case I have to swap them uh, that may happen uh, if I uh, decide to go with uh, negative feedback on this amplifier and sometimes you you get it wrong uh, get it swapped and uh, you have a generator instead of an amplifier so you have to swap the leads on uh, the output transformer and you can do it either on the primary on or on the secondary side sometimes you have to do it on the primary because uh, you've got a multi-section uh, secondary like uh, for 4, 8 and uh, 8 ohms for 4, 8 or 16 ohms but sometimes if you have just a single section you can uh, swap those uh, wires uh, either on the primary or the secondary side and it, um, it may be just a matter of preference or it may be a matter of practicality because uh, you want uh, shorter wires And there goes a piece of wire that also goes to the ground
By mistake, I uh, I took a uh, stereo jack. Let me look if I got a mono one. Uh, that's interesting. I will replace those stereo jacks with mono. Uh, that's strange that I haven't even noticed <laughs> that I uh, used the wrong ones. Mistakes happen all the time. Same goes for the input jack. Come on. And now the dummy load resistors. Each one of them is 33 ohms, uh, 3 watts. So if I connect four of them in parallel, then it will be 8.25 ohms uh, and uh, 12 watts in total. I don't really trust uh, the power writing on those resistors. Like uh, they are just too small for for the declared power. I don't trust that. But most of the time uh, the amplifier will work with a uh, speaker connected. So uh, nothing bad will happen uh, if, uh, if those resistors uh, get the, the power. It's more of a uh, safety feature rather than uh, something that will be constantly in use. I'm trying to form them in a nice packet.
And with all of them in place, time to solder that. I'm also thinking about where I should connect the, the ground wire. Let me think I'll connect it here. Oh, I think I made a mistake. <laughs> what was I doing? I like let uh, let me show you on a schematic. <laughs> I'm not infallible. <laughs> I I just made something. Just made something like this. See where the bug is? Those resistors, I uh, I should connect them between the between this contact and the ground. And this should be the only wire going into into this contact. So this wire needs to go out. And all those resistors have to be disconnected from uh, from this side. I'll use my spudger to bend the bend the leads. Unfortunately, some damage may happen to the, the socket. Hope not. The resistors are now liberated. I think I uh, should uh, unsolder all of them and form the uh, form the leads uh, for the new layout. Let's 
Sutter sucker time. Sutter sucker. It sucks. And it's good at it. Though I'd rather have a desoldering gun. Those things are a pleasure to work. I think I will put them in a, in a package. It might not be the best idea to place them right uh, below the output jack because uh, the, the heat, if, uh, if any, will uh, damage the plastic. So I think I will place them uh, slightly outwards. And I will wrap some uh, wire around those leads. And that's a nice connection on that. Now for the other side. Those resistors are already mechanically in place, so uh, there should be no problem with, uh, with all the with it all coming apart.
And we've got a nice resistor package. Let's verify uh, if it's actually 8 ohms. Interesting. Slightly more than I thought. Blame it on the contact resistance uh, between the reeds. There might be some dirt or rosin on it. Anyway, uh, after after uh, making the packet of uh, of those resistors, it's time to connect them. That was a gotcha! <laughs> that was a gotcha! So now the ground and also the other ground wire going all the way to the main filter cup. I use the star grounding technique here.
Come on. Of course, there's also the Pagalor capacitor. Make it 220 microfarads. Or if I have something nicer 407 you know this is 47 this is a uh, 330 I think I will just stick with the 220 uh, there's also the stray wire I need to remove And I will want to connect the stem on uh, on this tube with the stem on this tube. So I will need a piece of wire. This should be the good way to do that. But uh, first I, uh, I'd like to connect the cathode uh, on the phase inverter together with the other cathode. So 3 goes to 8.
of course there's some maneuvering. And now I can take care of the ground. Can use some more wire on this end. And of course the capacitor.
I'll bend the heater contacts away uh, so that they don't get shorted with the with the stem. And two is the control grid on uh, EL84. And let's let's use one kilo ohm uh, grid uh, stopper resistor, or maybe maybe go with two K two. I've got uh, I've got a lot of them. Fox IC15 uh, uses uh, uses one kilo, one and a half. And uh, this resistor will go uh, somewhere to the terminal strip. I don't exactly know where uh, it will go at this point, but. It it will go to the terminal strip. I need to have it in place before I uh, connect the capacitor because uh, later on I won't have uh, access to pin number two. And pin number one is not connected either. I don't have to worry about it. And the wire against the stem make the contact surface a little bit larger and then solder it. That's it for the cathode resistor and capacitor. Let's, uh, let's connect this circuit right uh, right here
found a very simple wiring for the EOLIT4 plates. Then the plates go to pin number 7. So that's the one. One of them goes here, the other one goes here. So that's just two short pieces of wire. Right at the transformer. So now I will prepare those teeny tiny pieces of wire. I'm gonna get some more heat shrink. And then uh, two additional one and four W seven diodes. the cathodes facing the center tap and power.
So that's for the output transformer's primary winding and there's also the secondary grid resistor on both tubes something like 100 ohms and I will look for it now I have a lot of uh, 100 ohm uh, 5 watt resistors but they are pretty bulky and um, no need to use um, that power I'll try finding 180 should have some of them here Okay, 18, that's one. And that's the other one. I just got those resistors on Saturday it's uh, it's just like uh, everything was there so uh, so many different values it was just uh, it was all just a mix-up of uh, different uh, resistors But that will come in handy in my lab. I got them cheap at uh, one of um, my local uh, electronic parts stores. And now the lead scratching ASMR. And of course I need the control grid on this tube.
I still can't put the effect uh, loop sockets. Not before I actually do the connections on uh, on the face inverter. I'll probably route some uh, wire out of the grid and uh, and uh, an old uh, pin on the tube. Maybe I'll use some some old wire for that. That goes to the plate resistor and and the other one will go to the input. And now I can install the effect loop sockets. Let's wire the 
I'm going to sisters uh, to to this uh, point on the terminal strap. And then I'll do the connection between this and uh, and the center tab. I'm uh, considering one more thing, like uh, like doing the <coughs> the, the filter resistor. And uh, placing the the second uh, and the screen grid uh, resistors uh, behind uh, the filter resistor, but for the time being, I think I will just uh, connect them directly. And it looks like I will have to make a U band uh, on the on the contact as both uh, both holes uh, in the contact they are pretty small they can accept one wire but not more. And this is gonna be tricky. I can tell you now that this is gonna be tricky. Hmm, might not be as hard as I thought. Pretty nice. It's 
so the output tubes are now fully wired apart from the control grids I gotta install the the grid uh, resistors and coupling capacitors I'm planning to use this terminal for the first stage uh, plate connection. But I might change my mind. And I will use the 820, or maybe I, maybe I will use the 470 ohms. Uh, I uh, I need to take a look at the tube catalog. Uh, do I have any? Any grid uh, resistor it's uh, it's one mega ohm uh, if uh, if using the if using cathode bias uh, it's one mega ohm uh, max and if using a uh, fixed uh, bias it's uh, It's using uh, it's uh, three hundred kilo ohms max. I'm using cathode bias, so I can go with one mag. So uh, eight hundred twenty k will be okay for this. It's 820k between the ground and uh, and the grid. I will route this resistor and connect it to the stem on uh, on one of the tubes. And I will uh, do the same with uh, with the other grid resistor. Also called uh, grid leak resistor.
And now if I turn on the amplifier, the output tubes will have everything set up. Now it's time to do the face inverter. One of the outputs of the phase inverter I'd like to have here. Vintage wire, double layer of silk, and then the plastic coating. Unfortunately, the cap doesn't have the outer foil marking. I really should make myself one of those Mr. Carlson's testers. And then it will be 33 kilo ohms, so 33 or 22. The other cup will be somewhere here. It will go to this point.
Yeah, I probably cut them a little bit too long. And the other length of this vintage wire goes to the other plate on the inverter tube. Come on, come on, go where I want you to go, just go where I want you to go, please. So the plates are now connected. And then I will wire the face inverter, but that's, that's for another episode. And... I'm a little bit curious. I'm a little bit curious about about how this amplifier will work. At least at least uh, the final stage So I will put the 
output tubes uh, and the rectifier tube into their socket. It's on dummy load, the internal uh, dummy load, so we're safe to switch it on. Let's monitor the plate voltage. As the output tubes are heating up, the voltage is dropping slightly and it stabilizes at uh, around uh, 285 but uh, this is not uh, the ultimate voltage uh, because there is no preamp there is no phase inverter and uh, those stages uh, also draw current so it will be slightly lower and what if I uh, measure the voltage on the solid state uh, branch of the rectifier it's over 300 volts switching to the solid state rectifier it drops down to 315 on the, on the tube rectifier we've got 312 after we change over to the tube rectifier, it drops down. Now I'm pretty sure that uh, the output tubes are heated up because uh, the voltage uh, dropped uh, even further down to 250 volts. So the tubes were just uh, st still heating up. On the solid state rectifier, it would be 290. So all in all, with uh, with power tubes, uh, we will have uh, less than 300 volts DC, and uh, probably something around. Uh, 260 or 270 with the solid state rectifier and less than 250 on the tube rectifier and let's measure the voltage drop on the cathode resistor it's 15 volts over 130 ohms that would mean that uh, this is uh, something like uh, 100, uh, 120 milliamps going through the resistor that would be 60 milliamps going through the tube That's on the tube rectifier and on the solid state rectifier. It's over 18 uh, volts. That would uh, make the current even higher. And I can feel by uh, by putting the, the hands uh, close to the amplifier that it's getting pretty hot so that would be it for this episode um, of the dirty dozen uh, amp build the output tubes are wired the next one will be the face inverter and also uh, some uh, 
testing of the power amplifier with the signal and maybe with uh, with some uh, music hooked up to the speaker well see you next time <laughs>